Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today we're going to take a look at the new rules for winter mooring with your narrowboat. Now, it's been a big sort of change compared to usual years and this is only my second winter on board so I was all prepared to settle in up at Chirk Bank which is no longer a place I can moor for the winter or can I? Well, let's dive in and have a look at what the new rules say. Right then, it's good to be back inside and in the warm. I've recorded a few versions of this video, so I'm getting extremely hot standing right on top of the fire. So let's dive in. Now, the first thing that you may notice if you look at the winter moorings is the fact that suddenly there's a lot less of them. Um, the Canal and River Trust have basically got rid of what they describe as the less popular uh, winter mooring places. So the perfect example of the coal that has happened is basically you've gone from, on this stretch of canal, being able to moor up from, at say, Ellesmere, the Poacher's Pocket, Chirk Bank, uh, the Trevor Basin, the Sun Inn, I think there's one more, and then Langothlin itself, um, to this year round, or this winter round, you can now moor up in the same stretch of canal at Ellesmere, Langothlin, and that's it. Now, at first, that looks like, oh my goodness me, they've all gone. I mean, for me personally, it was a shock to see Chirk Bank had gone, because that's where I intend to spend most of my winters. But, unfortunately, the option of the fixed mooring had disappeared. So, that might give you a momentary panic of, well, I can't moor up miles down that way or miles down that way, because it would be too impractical. But, but, all is not lost, because here is the huge change... There is now a new type of mooring, which is called the General Towpath Permit. And that is what I have got, and I've got a five-month one of those. Uh, and basically, it's cheaper, first of all, so that's a great bonus to keeping narrowboat life nice and low cost. Um, it's cost me about £40 a month, just a very slightly, uh, very slightly over £40 a month. Whereas to stop up at Chirk Bank last uh, winter, it cost me about £65 a month. And neither of those, if you if you consider that an equivalent of rent for the winter months, then those are certainly excellent prices. But the fact that it's even cheaper this year means that I just instantly have gone for it. Right, I'll have a full five months, and then now, what this tope, what this general towpath permit means is that I can moor up in non-fixed places. So basically, uh, I can moor up at Chirk Bank still because that's within the rules that we'll discuss in a moment. Um, the Poacher's Pocket, Chirk Bank, those sort of areas that I'd like to be in, I can still moor up at. But, because it's not fixed, I can obviously then, if I want, go down to St Martin's, a couple of miles around the corner that way, which is one of my favourite places on the canal that I've endlessly talked about, which I'm sure you've probably seen it. Love it for its amazing scenery in general, like rural, uh, it's perfect positioning. But also, oh, at the night time, it's got very little light pollution. It's got really low horizons. So for astronomy, you've got a huge amount of really dark sky. So with the new winter um, permit, instead of being fixed at, say, Chirk Bank and the other places, I have now got more places that I can actually moor up. So, for example, St. Martin's is now somewhere that I can go and moor up for, I don't know, a couple of weeks and then come back up here for a couple of weeks and just generally uh, shuffle around over the winter months. And that's something that I'm a huge fan of. There are, however, uh, some rather interesting variants of the uh, previous rules. For example, the winter mooring rules at these fixed places, such as the Poacher's Pocket or Chirk Bank, you literally moored up on the visitor moorings and the same post that says 48 hours down at Chirk Bank also has a plaque that says designated winter mooring payment required so that's where you would specifically be last winter whereas now I'm specifically not allowed to be on that little stretch of canal and have to go to the other side of the bridge which is rather strange really I'll show you exactly what this uh, means now in fact if we just head outside quickly so this point here last year was all specifically for winter mooring and it's the same thing up at Chirk Bank where the 48 hour sign has literally got a few month old sign at the bottom of the uh, labels saying designated winter mooring payment required so this year because of the change of rules Bizarrely, I am not allowed to moor up along here, and that is where I am allowed to moor up. 
So once again, it's a, a sort of a very odd rule, as you can see. If I move it up here, back from this sign here, then that's fine. But if I move up there, then I'm only allowed to stay two days. Whereas in the previous winter, you could have stopped here for five months. So that's a little bit odd. And as you can see, the canal is pretty empty. So it's not, well, I don't know really. It's not as if you're taking up a space. If this was obviously over the summer months, then you'd come down here and there would literally be boats moored up on the other side of the bridge, boats moored up right down here and then around the corner and quite often uh, you'll see a couple of holiday boats moored up on the turning point. So, back inside again. Um, as you can see, the canal is pretty empty and I mean there's sometimes where I go days on end without seeing a boat move and well, as you've seen along here, there's nobody here and it's very similar, I think there's one boat at Chirk Bank at the moment and yet still I cannot move further forward past that post because that's now not allowed. Um, so last year I could have spent five months on that stretch that I've just shown you. This year I can spend two days. Um, so that's just one of the interesting side effects but it's not really important apart from some places where it forces you to go onto the muddier canal and instead of being on the nice sort of grey stone um, towpath, you're properly well, trudging through a little bit of mud to get to your boat. But that's hardly the end of the world, it's just a minor annoyance. Aside from that rather interesting little quirk of the rules, um, there's another rule which is quite controversial and one of the most important that says you cannot stop within one kilometre of a offline marina or long-term mooring. Now that Basically, if you say a kilometre is 0.6 miles, so obviously that's in either direction of the marina or mooring, then that basically means you've got a 1.2 mile stretch of canal that you're not allowed to moor up on for longer than you normally would be able to over the winter. And what this has done in some cases has made the places that some people would like to moor over the winter against the rules to moor. So they've ended up not doing any winter mooring and just carrying on cruising. And there's been a few people, I'd say two or three people have contacted me on YouTube and on Facebook uh, just saying about the new mooring rules and what it's meant for them. Uh, and basically they've had to not do winter mooring or they would be more than happy to pay for winter mooring but they're not allowed to moor up where they want. So that's something that definitely needs to be looked into. and. It's one of the rules, uh, one of the things that the Canal and River Trust says is about this is that it's basically there to make sure that they are not operating a monopoly at the expense of the marinas. So, for example, because they are the Canal and River Trust, I'm sure they could probably say, right, from now on, everybody over winter can moor up on any stretch of the canal. As long as you can drive a pin in or, I don't know, tie a rope around something, then you can moor up there. And that obviously would then mean that you could literally moor up right opposite a marina entrance for five months and they could, well, the Canal and River Trust could say, right, it's going to cost nothing. And then suddenly the marinas find themselves with, hang on a second, we've just lost out on an awful lot of trade potentially here. Now, that's all fine and good if you're not wanting to take trade away from the marinas, but... It's important and a very fine balance, I think, that if there's people who want to pay you um, to moor up somewhere and they're not allowed to, to protect a more expensive mooring option in a marina, then I think that's something that needs to be thought about very carefully because there's already conspiracy theories about the Canal and River Trust and who they're really representing. And suddenly saying, right, yeah, you're not allowed to moor up by a marina to protect that marina's uh, trade. That is not helping the situation with a lot of people who already have that uh, view and disposition to believe that the Canal and River Trust is not representing everybody's interests fairly. Um, I'll say for me personally, I don't have a very strong opinion on this. I mean, I'm first of all lucky that none of the rule changes have affected me uh, very much. So that's obviously something that gives me a good neutrality. But also, I would absolutely love a job working on, for the Canal and River Trust and doing general bits and pieces up and down the towpath. I think it would be fantastic. Oh, what a job. Um, but really, I don't have much of an opinion. There's, I look at it like this. As with all things, 
there's all sorts of factors involved in running a big organisation and there's all sorts of interests that conflict with each other as just a natural part of life and obviously some of those are going to get represented and some of them unfortunately aren't. If you've got conflicts of interest then officially an organisation can only follow down one path and ultimately it's not the sort of thing that neutrality can live on forever with. So there'll be, I don't know, I'll certainly reserve judgment for the future because you never know what rules might come in and what could change to alter people's views on things like that. But it's like I say, I mean, give them a break. It's the first year of the Canal and River Trust taking over from British Waterways. Let's see where it goes. Um, so, yeah, uh, moving on, there are a few other um, various rules based on the winter mooring. Uh, there's some things that apply to specific canals like London and specific stretches of canals. I'll put a link in the description of this video to see the, gen no, the full page and the proper list of rules so you can check out for yourself what there may be rela uh, relating specifically to the canal in your area. Right, let's have a change of camera angle to end this video. Um, like I say, there's a lot to be said on the matter. I'll put a link in the description, like I say, so you can see the full list of rules because it's a very, fairly lengthy um, web page because there's all things about London moorings and all that sort of thing. Um, but there's two other rules of note. Uh, one that I think, I don't know, it's, it's almost quite quaint and I don't know, it's sort of a nice image of canal life really. That if you're mooring in a place where it's, I don't know, I think it's frequently used by anglers is the term, something like that. And basically, if you're mooring up somewhere that there's fishing that goes on very frequently, then you're meant to leave a five, min five metre gap between yourself and the next boat along so that there's room for fishermen. And I don't know why, but I really like that as a sort of, I don't know, a series of boats and fishermen along a canal on a nice winter's day, frost in the air and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> And of course, it's always worth mentioning, being winter, ice and snow. Now, if there is a frozen canal, then obviously they don't expect you to suddenly be able to melt the ice and move along. So if there's continuous or, I don't know, excessive ice and snow, then there is also the potential for the rules to be relaxed. So really, like I say, have a check for the full rules if you want, if you're interested, particularly the London rules. Um, I'm not sure why that's interesting to me, but I've read them all a couple of times anyway. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Check out my other videos for loads more. I mean, I've got over 10 hours, well over 120 uh, narrowboat videos online now. I've got loads more about astronomy, biking and writing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, please check out my book for the Kindle. It's called The Narrowboat Lad about my first year living on board Tilly and also on the 1st of January 2014 you will then be able to find out the next Narrowboat Lad book so check out that uh, feel free to like the Facebook page follow me on Twitter feel free to add my personal account on Facebook or follow that and really have a fantastic day happy boating and farewell